Hi, and welcome to Edwards Motorhomes. Today we've got a bit of a treat for you. Not many of the 2022s coming through at the moment, but we do have a Safiro 675 here, so we can do a handover video for you on that. Really hope you find it informative. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna start on the outside of the vehicle and we're gonna work our way in. Now, the first thing to show you, of course, is the key. This vehicle does have cab central locking. So top button just there, that will open the doors. Middle button will lock the cab doors. Silver button at the top, ignition key comes out. Now, inside the door, on the passenger side, fuel filler just here, and underneath, we have your Ad Blue tank. Now, with Ad Blue, it's very difficult to tell how much is in the system. I would always advise taking a small bottle of Ad Blue with you because if it does go onto limp mode, you don't want to be in the middle of nowhere, literally with nothing for miles and miles around. If you've got some with you, pop it in, fill it up, and away you'll go. Next, we have gas just in here. Again, you'll get two six kilogram propanes in there, no problem at all. Awning light, electric hookup point just here. You do have that black clip, so when you're releasing the cable, just press that down before you pull it out. Fridge vents here and here. We have this huge garage area here, as well as being another bed, but I'll come to that in more detail in a moment. The back, of course, we have your bike rack, we have your reversing camera, and underneath we do have a full-size spare wheel as well. Again, another large garage door for access just there, and then that brings us on to the cassette toilet. Now, for anybody who's never used a cassette toilet before, the first thing to remember is on the toilet itself, inside the vehicle, there is a grey handle, and that will open and close the blade on the toilet. For obvious reasons, the blade must be closed before you can release the cassette. And to do that, you have this blue handle, which is just here. So what you do, you lift that up and you pull out. Now, every campsite should have what they call an Alson point. So you unclip and you just wheel that to the Alson point. When you get there, take off the blue cap, you press the blue button at the back, that will allow air into the system so it doesn't glug all over the place, it'll flush away nicely. Once you've flushed it away, hose through, flush away again, put your new chemical directly into the cassette, that will be the blue or the green, and pop it back in. Now, the other thing to bear in mind when we're talking toilets is toilet paper. You either want to use proper camping toilet paper or you want to use the cheaper stuff. Don't use the triple quilted stuff, It'll just won't break it down properly and that will not be a pleasant job trying to clean it out. Next we have your fresh water filling point just here. And just here, this handle, that's for your waste tank. So again, to open it up, pour that out and it will drain down. Here we have the fluffier heating. Now you'll see on this window, just there we have a sensor. The reason for that being is where your flue is situated, if you were to have your heating on, the fumes are going to come back up and go inside the van if the window is open. So you must make sure that's closed for your heating to work. Let's take a look inside. In the cab, we have just on the door here, your controls for your two front electric windows. Controls here for your electric mirrors, which again, you pick the mirror and then you use the joystick to move up, down, left or right to get into the right position. Lights are just here, wash wipes and indicators. On the steering wheel, you have your cruise control settings and you also have your Bluetooth settings for your radio. So, of course, your radio we have just here and just above it, we can pop this down where you can pop in your mobile phone or your tablet. Air conditioning and heater controls are just here. And then we have your Remis cab lines. Now, with your Remis cab lines, the important thing is when you pinch, you slide across. Now, the temptation is to do this. You want to keep this as straight as possible and the magnets will just lock on like so. When you bring it back, again, get to that point, keep it nice and straight, tuck in the bottom, and clip it into place. When we're doing the windscreen, it's the same scenario. So you slide this across, you may need to adjust your reversing camera there, and you lock it into place. Now, one thing you do have to be careful of, you can turn up somewhere quite late at night, this might not be fully close together, but the magnet is quite strong, so even if it's on a little bit, it'll hold. But if you start moving around, this can happen, 
and you could have some embarrassing moments. So it's great just to put an elastic band or something around there just to make sure they don't pop out. Behind the driver's seat, underneath these traveling seats just here, we have your boiler, your leisure battery, and your boiler drain just here. Now, it's not so easy to see, but as you can see on the top, you've got this blue catch. Now, there's a little blue button down here. Now, if that blue button's in, it means the system is sealed. If you want to open it, you turn that quarter of a turn, a little blue button pops up just there. Now, that means it's open. Now, if you do try trying to pump any water through your system, what's going to happen now is it's going to come straight through to your boiler. It's going to dump all over the floor. So you must remember to have that sealed when you're trying to use your water systems. You only want it like that for the drain down. Now, this has got an automatic drain, which will mean that when you get down to two degrees, if you've forgotten to pop that open, it will do it for you automatically. While we're working with the travel seats, we're going to look underneath these because under here we have your fresh water tank. So if we pop off this cover just here, take off the red. Now you'll see there are two bungs in there. The lower of the two is your full drain. That will drain down the entire system. But the top one is your travel drain. Now, if you pull that one out, it will leave you with around about 15, 20 litres of water. The idea being is you've got enough for when you're travelling to use your sink or use your toilet and those sorts of bits and pieces. Your dinette bed is actually quite a simple process to make up. Now, it's far easier to remove these backrests to start off with. The reason being is one, they just get in your way and two, you actually lose quite a bit of length on your bed if you keep them into the place. So I'm just going to pop these out of the way for a moment. And then we're just going to pop these up out the way for just a second. It just makes it easier when we're using the table. So next, lift the table up and it'll unclip from the wall. Just drop it down here and you'll see with the table leg, you've got a button in the middle. Press that, push it and then that will lock into place. Now there is a lower bar and what we're going to do is we're now going to clip the table onto the lower bar like so. Now that becomes the base of your bed. We're going to put these cushions back into place now the van is supplied with some extra cushions first of all this one it just slots straight into the center and then in this cupboard we have these two extenders to use these you just push away and unclip the legs same on this side it can be a bit stiff sometimes when they're brand new and then underneath here, you'll see there's two holes. And you've got two bungs just there. So we're just gonna slot that in like so. Same with this one. It's got the wardrobe up. And this one, just find the bungs into the holes. Like so and then you have three smaller cushions and these th smaller cushions literally sit on the end and there you have your dinette bed your fuse board is situated underneath the wardrobe in this cupboard your trip switches are located underneath the oven And your gas isolator switches are just above the cutlery drawer just here. Your toilet seat does swivel so you can get into the most comfortable position. Now when I lift this up you'll notice at the moment we've got the blade across hence the reason why we could actually take the cassette out. Now I was telling you about this grey handle and that will open or close the cassette. We have your electric flush just here which you will need your water pump on for it to flush the water. And again, if the cassette is full, you have that green light there that will turn red. Then we have your toilet. The kitchen is really well equipped. Now to start off with, you've got good storage space up here. And in this cupboard here, you've got your controller for your solar panel. 
obviously we have your sink your gas hobs just there gas oven now this is also a grill but you do need to slide this out when you're using the grill so again it doesn't get too heated and end up melting your dials just there as we've already seen of course just underneath here you have your trip switches and in here we have your gas isolator switches and of course we do have this really large cutlery drawer as well then we have your three-way fridge freezer now how this works press the button there and you'll turn it on now as you can see at the moment we're on auto and we're on electric so auto will pick the best source for you now to change this press the button and hold it in while it's flashing you can then move that to electric only battery gas back around to auto when you've got what you want press the button again and then by using up or down you can select the temperature i'm going to leave it on auto for a moment now auto it's obvious what it will do is it will pick up the best source for you or what it thinks is the best source for you now we're plugged into the mains and we've got no gas on so it's obviously going to pick up onto the electric for us just there if you're wild camping again technically then it should just go straight on the gas now the one that confuses people is battery because you would assume battery means leisure battery doesn't it means vehicle battery so you must make sure the engine started before you put it onto battery on auto it should do that itself now the one thing I would say with auto is quite simple monitor because it could find that if you're plugged into the mains and you've got your gas on it may find that gas is more efficient and try to run that for 99% of people it will do exactly what you want it to do but again always monitor it so new on the 2022 model is the fact that your heating and your 12 volt control panel is all now in this one control panel now you'll have to bear with me a little bit because this has literally just come in and we've not been given any instruction we've just been able to play with it ourselves so as you can see it's telling you the temperature and your resources now if we press the button to unlock the screen we press on resources just there it will show you again how much water you have in your system and also your batteries and how much voltage you got in so we're going to go back to the home page if we go to room climate just there then we have a choice between heating and ventilation so if we pop it on heating we can then pick our temperature so again by going up or down the system we can pick the temperature comfort or fast and then by pressing down here we can choose either gas or we can choose electric and you get 900 watts or 1800 pop that off for now then we come down to switches so switches again you can turn your outdoor light on your interior lights on or for your water pump pop your water pump on turn your system off this one here for your water press on there you do have to get it right in the center and again to turn on your hot water you just press on there now but then we come back around and we've got your notifications now if you have done something wrong with your heating or anything else it will come up there and it will give you options and it will tell you then how to resolve that we come back around and we're going to slide across to your next screen now on here you've literally got your settings just there and if you do have the inet system you program it in from there it looks like it's going to be quite an easy system to use um, I'll tell you more on about it in future videos when we've had more instruction for anybody who's never had a motorhome before what we're going to talk about now is priming your system and also draining your system down now when you prime your system the first thing you need to do is your water tank where we were looking before you go in there and you check that you both your bungs are in because the last thing you want to do is start filling up with water because again you pop the hose in from outside you start filling up and you just pour out all over the floor so make sure your bungs are in then the next thing you do is fill up once you've filled up the next thing we do is go to your boiler now you'll remember that you have to turn the top and you have to make sure that that blue button is pressed in else other words what will happen is when you put your water pump on the water will just transfer from your fresh water tank through your boiler and again drop all over the floor so you've got to make sure that's sealed now once you've done that you've got your water pump on you open up all your taps now for the first minute or so it's probably going to cough and splutter a little bit as it lets the air run through the system once it all starts running through you've primed your system you can then knock your taps off again you can turn your water pump off if you so wish you've just got to remember to put your water pump back on when you want to use your water systems including the toilet 
Now, drain down, especially come the winter months, is very important because the last thing you want to do is leave water on board. You get a bad frost, it can do an awful lot of damage. So now we're working basically in reverse. So what you're going to do is you're going to open up your fresh water tank, you're going to open up your wastewater tank, and you're going to drain the system down. Then you flick your switch on your boiler, drain down your boiler. Now, I would usually say don't put your water pump on if you've got no water in your system, but just for a few seconds, make sure that you've got the taps open, you put the water pump on, just so if there's any water left in the taps and in the pipes, it gets rid of that. Now, something else I do have to say at this point, it obviously sounds obvious, but it's something you do have to think about is, you must make sure you've filled your boiler with water before you try to heat the water. Now, when you put the water pump on, it'll make a noise as it's filling up. Once it stops that noise, it means it's filled your boiler, you can then heat up your hot water. So now we've come to windows, blinds, fly screens, skylights. Very important when you're traveling, skylights and windows must be closed. They're double glazed, but they're plastic. If they catch the wind, they'll be gone. Now, as you can see, you've got these buttons just here, so you need to press those in. And release, push open, and just tighten these up when you have them in the right position. If you pull down from here, you've got your fly screens, from here you have your blinds now that works exactly the same again on your skylights which I can't reach only being five foot six without the ladder but one that is very important to tell you about as well is we have a fly screen just here on the habitation door which is great for stopping the insects and things coming in but you must be careful with your habitation door because there's a bin at the bottom now if that catches the wind and comes back you can damage your fly screen so just be very very careful the 675 has a very very clever bedroom area because a lot of people who can remember the Zafiro 690 used to love the fact that you had this large garage area now obviously the 690 is gone people have missed it now they've been very clever with what they've done with the 675 because you could always lift this bottom bunk off but you had this great big gap now by having this boarding just here we can unclip this, which we have to do both sides. We can then drop this down and that completely seals the garage off from the living area. So again, if you've got a moped or bikes and things you wanna put in here and you don't wanna see that mess inside, it's locked perfectly away. Now, when it comes to making it back into a bedroom, again, it's a very simple process. So what we're going to do, we're going to unclip the wall and clip this across. Then we unclip the bed, just there, and then we do the same on the other side. So once we've unclipped that and clip that over onto there, we can then drop this down. Then you have your beds all made up. Now the beauty is you've still got a storage area underneath this bed, which you can't see. So again, as far as anybody's aware, it's just a bunk bed arrangement in the rear. Now they call these singles, but really, I mean, you get two adults on these. It's a fantastic size. Thank you for watching this handover video on this new for 2022 Zafiro 675. Really hope you found it informative. We have got quite an extensive back catalogue on other handovers on different types of motorhome. If you'd like to look at any of those, we have a subscribe button just down there. Press your finger on there, get that sorted and come and have a look at some of the other things that we've done. Thank you very much.